to our presentation tonight, Reducing Toxins in Our Home. And my name's Joanna Salinas. I am the Outreach Coordinator for the Waukesha County Green Team. For those of you unfamiliar, the Waukesha County Green Team is a volunteer-based um, 501c3 nonprofit in Waukesha County, which is in Wisconsin. So I know we do get people from all over the United States joining us. We are right outside of Milwaukee. And um, our mission is really to promote environmental um, sustainability in Waukesha County and uh, throughout our region. And we do that through education, collaboration, and local action. So we work with residents, businesses, schools, churches, municipalities, and other organizations. And we're so excited to gather all of you here with us tonight. Um, and I am excited to introduce you all to Eileen. And I'm gonna let someone in real quick here. Um, Eileen has been a wellness advocate for, um, well, I'll let her tell you more <laughs> with um, doTERRA. And she is really excited and pumped for this class. And we're so excited to see all of the information. I got a sneak preview of some of it and it's good stuff. So um, after this presentation, I will send out a follow-up email that has a ton of links that Eileen has provided um, with all the information she's presenting here. And the video will be available on our YouTube channel, barring any technical difficulties. Um, so don't feel you have to take copious notes. Um, if you have questions throughout the presentation, we ask just that you stay muted during the presentation. You can type any question you have into the chat. In fact, I suggest it if you have a question as she's going to just type it in right away so you don't forget it. And then afterwards, Eileen will um, have lots of time available to answer those questions. So without further ado, welcome Eileen. Thanks, Joanna. Um, welcome everybody. We're all getting used to these new Zoom classes and adapting, I was just telling Joanna kind of hard, but on a night like this, it actually is kind of nice because it's very, very cold outside and snowy, so I'm kind of happy. I see somebody sitting in front of their fireplace. I wish I was sitting in front of my, yep, there's <laughs> Sonia. <laughs> so that would be a nice place to be sitting, but thanks all for taking the time to join us, and hopefully there'll be quite a few people able to watch the recording too. So as Joanna said, I am a wellness advocate for doTERRA. I've been for about 10 years. And this all kind of started, um, I was diagnosed almost 20 years ago with Crohn's disease. And I went through a lot of surgeries and just wasn't getting better. And there just wasn't really any cure or hope in sight. So I started looking for things on my own, um, ended up being a lot of natural alternatives that I found. Um, so toxins were a big part of that and getting rid of toxins were a big part of that. So I've done quite a bit of research and changed my life quite a bit because of that. Um, so I went down a lot of paths, but like I said, pretty much all of them included Mother Nature. And I'm not saying we don't need our doctors. I'm, I still need my doctor. You know, it's, I'm, I'm not anti-doctor. I just think there's a lot of complementary alternatives that can be very beneficial to us. Um, so during this process, like I said, I did learn a lot about all the toxins and all the huge role they play on their health. So that's what I'm going to focus on tonight. Um, so I'm going to walk you through like where they are in our life, how to get rid of them, things like that. But I'm also going to give you a lot of um, recipes, ideas, DIYs, things you can do at home to help take care of that. So let's get started. Okay, can everyone see that? Okay, good, thanks, Joanna. Okay, so um, reducing toxins in, in, in your home by using natural products. So I'm gonna talk tonight a lot about um, cleaning with natural products, and it's not only gonna be safer, cheaper, and quite a few times it's gonna work better, um, but also you're gonna use like overall less product too. Um, and these are going to be from commonly found ingredients in your house. 
And then I'm gonna also talk about products you can use for your body, like natural hygiene products too. So many of us think clean means harsh disinfections and nothing can be farther from the truth. You can have clean, really nice smelling home without using those products and you can um, not, and they won't affect your health. So my pre presentation will talk about toxins, what they are, where they come from and how you can get rid of them with safe alternatives. And my button is not working. Why is my button not working? Hang on a second. Okay, I think I have to use a different button. Maybe I can minimize this. Sorry, this just going to take a second here. It wasn't working. <laughs> That's okay. okay. All yeah. right. Um, you know the people? Pardon? Okay. Um, okay. I want to start with a quote from the American Lung Association, and this is a direct quote right from them. Um, cleaners and household products can irritate eyes and throat cause headaches and other health problems, including cancer. They can contribute to respiratory problems, allergic reactions. You can see in this quote, headaches is even mentioned twice in there. So a toxin is any substance that causes harm to the body. So that can come from a lot of different sources. And unfortunately, we're just saturated with them in the whole world around us. Um, many of them we aren't even aware of. Um, the American Lung Association mentions a few of them, aerosol spray products, health, beauty, and cleaning products, air fresheners, bleach, detergent, and dishwashing liquid, dry cleaning chemicals, rugs, upholstery cleaners, furniture, and floor polish, and oven cleaners. Let's see if, oh, oh, there it is working. Okay, sorry, went too fast. <laughs> um, so we have toxins that we know are in a lot of these pro products and toxic load is the long-term exposure to these products. And it refers to the accumulation of all these toxins in the body. So you have toxins and then you have the toxin load that it um, creates on the body. So this is all the burden, all the stress that, that it puts on the system and the organs and can cause disease. So there's pathogens, uh, chemicals, and radiation. So pathogens are microbial agents. That's like bacteria, fungus, viruses, things like that, that invade the body and can cause infection and disease. And then the toxic load from chemicals are natural and synthetic substances that cause harm to the body. Um, examples of those are like processed foods. It's surprising how many we have in our processed foods. Some of the major offenders are like artificial sweeteners and flavor enhancers. Um, and then there's things like the automobile exhaust, cigarette smoke, plastics, pesticides, solvents, and then the harsh cleaning products too. And then there's radiation, which is the high energy particles that can cause harm to the cellular structures and DNA. And the most common source for that which I think we all know, but we don't really think about, is the sun. That's something we're exposed to all the time. And I could probably do a whole class just on that. But anyway. <laughs> um, and again, toxins build up in the body and create a heavy toxic load, which is the accumulation of toxins. People overlook the cumulative effect of repeated exposure since no one really is affected by one single exposure. So it's kind of like that drop of water in the, in the flood doesn't think it's responsible either. I thought that was an appropriate slide. And just a couple quick facts. Um, due to chemical residue, the pollution inside our home can be two, two to five times higher than outside our home. Chemicals and cleaning products evaporate into the air and can also end up in our household dust. So the problem is it intensified when we clean in small unventilated spaces, especially like in bathrooms where levels can really get highly concentrated. And that is where a lot of our highly toxic cleaners can be used. So studies show proof that use of chemicals um, are linked to allergies, birth defects, cancer, psychological abnormalities, there's asthma, autoimmune disease, cancer, Alzheimer's, ADD, there's a huge list. 
and we generate huge amounts of waste and the byproducts also remain in the environment. And the poison control, um, some facts from them, more than 90% of poisonings happen in the home and it's medicines, household cleaners, pesticides, they're kind of at the top of the list. Um, Poison Control Center receives a call every 12.7 12 to 12 .7 seconds. Children under five make up for more than half of poison exposures, and that's mostly from cleaning products. Uh, nearly 83% of poison exposures are unintentional, and almost half of teen, and teen exposures are intentional. So I don't know if everyone has looked at their toothpaste box. Um, I think quite a few people already know this, but there is a warning on there that you are not supposed to swallow it. So this is something you put in your mouth and you're supposed to do it a couple times a day, yet you're not supposed to swallow it. And if you do, you're supposed to call the poison control center. Um, you can see the, the uh, my mouse over here, the warning right here. And a big culprit of that is the sodium lauryl sulfate. You can see that in the inactive, ingredient, inactive ingredients right here. Um, that can cause irritation. It can clog pores, give you mouth ulcers, canker sores, allergic reactions, mouth dryness. Um, and it can actually break down enamel, which kind of seems, um, you know, the opposite of what you would think it would do if you're trying to clean your teeth and it can cause cavities. So that seemed kind of weird to me, but, and mouthwash is also full of a lot of these toxic ingredients. So you have to make sure you use a fluoride sulfate free toothpaste with no food dyes or artificial flavorings. Um, so really try and find a natural alternative to that. There are some homemade toothpaste. They don't, I haven't really found a lot of success with them just because of the um, taste of them, but a lot of people make their own toothpaste with baking soda. There's some recipes out there and I can get you some too if that's something you want to try. But the main thing is that you want to try a natural product. And the toothpaste I use actually has enzymes in it too that um, help kill off the bacteria. And we'll go to the next one. So you can see on the 23 toxic ingredients to avoid list, there is number seven and number 21. Seven is fluoride and number 21 is that sodium lauryl sulfate that I was talking about, that's that foaming agent. Um, and alcohol is another problem that can dry and irritate skin, but it also disrupts, oops, I went too far there. Sorry about that. <laughs> Um, so alcohol can dry and irritate skin, but it also disrupts the, the barrier function of removing important um, antibacterials that leave your skin vulnerable to things like the irritants, allergens, bacteria, and viruses. Now we'll go to this one. Uh, so I mentioned earlier processed foods. Um, so that would be, these are the three way toxins can enter your body. So processed foods is the biggest one for ingesting chemicals. Um, there are other things like lip gloss, um, things like that, that you might put on your lips and still ingest. And then another way your body absorbs toxins is through the skin, um, which is our largest organ. Some companies choose to use known carcinogens um, which are um, ingredients that promote cancer. And they know that, but they still choose to use these ingredients. And there's toxins like coal tar and lead acetate in personal care products that we assume are safe and okay. Um, but these aren't like trace ingredients in these products. These are like base ingredients, kind of like flour and bread. And we absorb up to 60% of that in our skin. And it takes less than a minute to do that. And from, uh, for most chemicals to get into the bloodstream. And children absorb 40 to 50% more than adults do. So it gets into theirs even faster. Here it shows 26 seconds it takes to get onto the skin. And if there's chemicals in the products, there's gonna be chemicals in you. So our skin is really important. It protects our body against disease and um, plays a key role in protecting the body against disease and excessive water loss. 
and here's some more products. I'm going to talk to you in a few minutes more about fragrances, um, but the a big part of this pro problem is fragrances that they put in products and preservatives, um, which are good for shelf life, but they're not really good for loss for us. And this is what's coating our skin, and it's in makeup removers, hair gloss, mousses, liquid liner, shampoo and conditioner, moisturizer, lipstick, shaving cream, body wash, antiperspirant foundation. And the FDA approves all this. Um, so it's, I don't want to tell you that if the FDA says it's okay, it is, because I kind of have a hard time with a couple of them. Um, so I think you just need to be educated and kind of look on your own and look at these product, products and know the ingredients. And then the third way, I have to move something out of the way here. Okay. Whoops, sorry. And then the third way is inhalation. Um, so by using chemical products for cleaning, you're putting hazardous, toxic, and carcinogenic chemicals in the air. And then the floating particles get inhaled into our bloodstream, giving us chemicals to all our body cells and our brains. So the average American uses nine or more products today, and each of those contain 126 ingredients. So again, you have to really look at the ingredients. So here's the dirty dozen. Um, the Citizens Campaign for the Environment came up with this list a while ago, but these are known carcinogens. So again, these are the cancer causing ones. They're in body wash, detergents, dish soaps, even shampoo. And these are all still on the market. And Snuggle, I don't know if any of you have used that, but that's another biggie. If you look, the third one there is that benzyl acetate um, linked to causing cancer. And there's ethanol in there. Um, it's just crazy the amount of things that are in there. I was watching, TV on Sunday night, and I saw this ad, so I had to put it in here. I, I went online and found this product. I have looked and looked, and I cannot find the ingredients. So they won't tell you what the ingredients are, but there is a precautionary statement, hazardous to humans and domestic animals. And it's an antibacterial fabric softener. It's, I'd never seen it before. It looks like Ty just came out with this. Um, but like we've talked about antibacterials. This isn't anything new. And there's like triclosan and microbin are like insecticides that are in micro that are in antibacterials. So those are the ones that, yeah, they're going to wipe out the bad germs, but they're also going to wipe out those good germs too. And dryer sheets, um, another very toxic item in your house. If you're going to get rid of one thing, my suggestion, this should be your first thing to get rid of. Um, they're very toxic. And then you're not only, you know, you can easily replace them with dryer balls, or I even have a recipe where you can use a sponge and throw it in there. Um, but it, they are, um, they can irritate the skin and throat, respiratory and in irritation and asthma disrupt hormones, chemicals classified as carcinogens again, and environmental damage. Um, so again, if there's one thing you can get rid of, this would be the one that I would suggest. So to reduce your toxic load, and again, toxins accumulate and you get your toxic load. So the first place is to avoid toxic avoid toxic exposure, which is what I'm gonna mainly talk about tonight. And then there's support defensive functions, which would be like using some food-based supplements. Um, and then the third is support elimination functions, which is mainly detox. So we have this built-in disposal system uh, for eliminating harmful toxins. However, when they are absorbed at a faster rate, then our lymphatic system can get rid of them. Toxins spill over into the bloodstream and then they wreak havoc and lead to health problems. 
but the biggest thing um, in that category is detaxing that will help that. But like I said, I'm going to mainly just focus on toxic exposure tonight. The majority of cleaning and personal hygiene products contain synthetic fragrances and harsh chemicals. I wanna just talk for a second about fragrances. You're gonna see this on a lot of prior products and it probably doesn't really throw up a red flag, but it should. Red um, artificial, and a lot of times it'll just say fragrances. It won't, won't say natural fragrances or artificial fragrances, it'll just say fragrances. That word alone can mean there are up to 300 ingredients in it. And all they have to use is the word fragrance. And we have no idea what's in those fragrances, but most of the time it's um, artificial fragrances. It's not anything natural. So they're in perfumes, shampoos, conditioners, candles, air fresheners. Um, uh, chemicals can be found in carpet. And that's carpet, a carpet cleaner. It's in your carpet. It's in paint. It's in cosmetics, sunblock, detergents, everyday household cleaners. Preservatives by nature are designed, <clears throat> excuse me, um, are designed to be zytotoxic. So that means they're designed to kill cells and become hazardous to the rest of the body. Um, we all have these preservatives are in our lives to extend the shelf life which is nice, but they can cause respiratory issues, hyperactivity in kids, obesity, they can weaken the heart and heart tissue, give you headaches, and again, cause cancer. We're hearing that word a lot tonight, which is kind of sad when we know that there's some other alternatives. And um, so I'm gonna go through some slides here and there's going to be um, some recipes and things like that. Like Joanna said, you're gonna be emailed a link to some of these, but if um, there's something specific that I talked about that you're not gonna get a link to, please feel free afterwards just to contact me. I'll make sure I get it to you. Um, there's, and there's a lot on the internet too. Like if I mention a cleaner, it doesn't have to be my specific cleaner. There's a lot of different alternatives out there. So making over your cleaning cabinet, it's gonna be natural, it's gonna be safer, cheaper, as effective and use less product. I've said that a few times. A lot of these recipes, the base ingredients are gonna be vinegar, baking soda, which are really powerful cleaners, especially if you use some hot water and elbow grease with them. If you want a foaming agent, Castile soap, I don't know if any of you use that, but even Walmart carries it. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it anywhere. But that's going to add that foaminess so you can, you know, maybe spread out your cleaner more. Um, we use it in our soft scrub that I make. And that just, you know, helps foam it up and, and cover the surface better. Vinegar is an uh, excellent stain and water spot remover. Um, and it has strong antibacterial properties too. And then of course, if you add some essential oils to any of these, these, these cleaners, then they're gonna be even more powerful and effective. So I'm gonna talk about some essential oils that you can add to your cleaners tonight. So I wanted to just touch base about a little um, background about them. So they're toxic free, they're not harmful to the environment, they can purify and um, destroy germs. They protect against unwanted pathogens and bacteria, they're antifungal. They aid with seasonal and environmental threats. They decrease pathogens inside your home. They can boost immunity, aid in respiratory dis discomfort, relieve runny nose, cough, night sweats, clean the air, eliminate bugs and dust mites. They can also improve your energy circulation and mood, reduce redness, irritation, and puffiness of the skin, and uh, promote healthier skin. Just to let you know what an essential oil is, um, they're natural compounds that are extracted from plants. If you look at these pictures here, there's a peppermint and a lavender plant. 
and it's the plant's natural immune system. So it's kind of like the lifeblood of the plant. So it fights against bacteria, viruses, and diseases that can attack the plant. And they can do the same thing for us. So there's 50 to 80 times more powerful than herbs, and they have hundreds of compounds, each with a healing benefit. So they're pure, they're potent, they're safe, and they work fast. So you can use them, again, for all different things, skin irritations, digestive discomfort, mood, mouth health, muscle discomfort, sleep. There's a lot of different things you can use them for. So when we're talking about essential oils, this was kind of my aha moment where they really made sense to me. So if there's one thing about essential oils that you walk away with tonight, I'd kind of like you to think about this one. So this is the cell of our body right here. The outer cell is um, made of fat. Bacteria lives on the outside of the cell, but on the inside of the cell is where some of those nasty viruses can get or are where they are, not where they can get, that's where they are. So if you use a synthetic um, pharmaceutical product, then it's going to be able to get to that bacteria, but it can't get inside that cell because they're water-based pharmaceuticals and our cells are made of fat and they just don't mix. So if you go to the doctor and they say, sorry, there's nothing we can do. Antibiotics aren't going to help, you know, just go home and wait it out. <clears throat> That's probably because it's something going on inside the cell. So essential oils, <clears throat> excuse me, essential oils are oil-based. So they actually can get absorbed into that cell. You can see right here, they're getting absorbed into the cell and they can actually stop what's going on in there from reproducing. So like I said, this is just the one thing, I hope I explained it well enough that just really made a lot of sense to me that, oh yeah, that does make sense. And again, instead of using those synthetic medi medicines that are water-based, these oil-based alternatives that help our plants tremendously can also help us. Um, in these situations, oregano is a really wonderful one to use and you can throw in some tea tree and on garden it to, and it's just a powerhouse. Citrus oils that excel as cleaners. So we have lemon, wild orange, grapefruit, bergamot, tangerine, lime. I have some clementine here that I use also, but they're natural cleansers. Um, I think a lot of you probably use some cleaners that already have that scent in them, so it wouldn't be a new idea, um, but they're natural cleansers, they're purifying and they destroy germs and they also protect against unwanted pathogens and bacteria. And then some, my favorite one to use, you can use any of them, but my favorite one to use is lemon. We have some of that here. So you can wash produce with that. You just put it in a little bit of lemon oil and some water with some vinegar and baking soda and you can wash your produce when you get home from the store with that. So um, one bottle of lemon essential oil, a 15 milliliter bottle has 15 lemons in it. And I'm not talking our size lemons, I'm talking like these huge lemons from Italy. They're like twi at least twice the size of ours. So it's like 30 of our lemons. So they take, when you take the rind and you like twist it and you see those oils spurting out, that's what these oils are. Um, this is a good one for removing sticky messes or grease. Like if you have um, like a sticker on a gift that you can't get the sticky off of, little cotton ball it comes right off. Pine sap, wash your hands, put a drop of lemon or wild orange. Wild orange work, works really well with that and it'll come right off. Um, it gets off permanent marker and shoe polish, protects leather and wood finishes add vinegar and water for carpet stains, and it's a really good surface cleaner. Um, it's a great detox oil. So I wanna talk about that just for a second. Um, the fat cells are the main area where toxins are held. So if you exercise 
and their your fat cells are full of toxins. Remember before how I talked about holding on to toxins in our body and we have to do that detox. Um, so you're gonna be, instead of burning those fat cells, you won't be able to because they're all full of these toxins that are stopping that. You're gonna start burning your muscle. So you need to get rid of those petrochemicals that are built up and lemon is gonna help you do that. So all you have to do is just put it in your water every day. It not only tastes good, but it's gonna make you drink a lot more water too, which we all know we have to do. There is two things with citrus oils. They are, um, you're not gonna be able to go out in the sun with them. So it's okay to take them internally, but they're photosensitive. So if you're gonna put any on your skin, just make sure you're not going outside for a few hours or it may discolor your skin a little bit. Um, but I usually use this internally. I don't really use this topically. <clears throat> um, the other thing is make sure you don't put lemon oil or any citrus oils in plastic. There are some safe plastics to use. So just make sure if you are using plastic, you know it's one that you can use, but always use metal or glass. My water bottle is, is glass that I use um, for drinking. So um, because lemon is going to detox, it's going to go into your body and get all those petrochemicals out of your cells. So it's going to do the same thing to the plastic. It's not going to do anything if you drop it on your skin. You know, you can drop it on your skin. It's going to be fine. You're not going to feel anything. But what I did is I took a piece of styrofoam just from an egg carton. And I'm just going to put one drop on here. And then in a couple of minutes, I'm going to show it to you. And you'll see why you don't want to use citrus oils on plastic. Uh, lemon is also great for immune support, appetite suppressant, aids in digestion, enhances energy, soothes an irritated throat, and helps with respiratory discomfort. Um, a few more excellent choices for cleaning are lemongrass, kind of smells like pledge. Uh, Purify it has lemon. Siberian fir, citronella, lime tea tree, and cilantro in it. It's a blend that doTERRA makes. On Guard is another blend that I use to keep away those seasonal threats. And lately I've been just taking that every day, but that has wild orange, clove, cinnamon, eucalyptus, and rosemary in it. Tea tree, I think a lot of us have heard of tea tree before, um, but you have to make sure it's a good tea tree oil. So that will be a cleanser, purifier, destroys germs, and it's an insecticidal. Siberian fir is wonderful. It smells just like a Christmas tree. So in your cleaners, if you're used to that pine smell, you could use Siberian fir. Um, there's a couple other ones too, but this I think would be the best one for that situation and you'll get that pine scent. Peppermint's another really nice one. And while you're using it, it's really invigorating too. It's gonna open up your respiratory system, a lot of other things to go with it. So that's a nice one to use. And then there's green mandarin. Um, it contains gamma terpene. So it's a really good surface cleaner. And oils for mold and fungus would be on guard, clove, cinnamon, rosemary, purified thyme, and oregano. And you just place some of those on a cleaning rag. You can dilute them in some water, depends on the application you're using. And wiped on the surface. And you can also diffuse these into the air for continued mold and fungus um, to kind of help stop it from growing rather than just cleaning it up. So I know there's a list here, but I do just want to take a minute and read through it because I think just you hearing these options, maybe you'll put it in the back of your head next time something comes up. It's like, oh, I can make my own on that. So I'm just, it'll only take a minute, but I just want to read through these quick. Um, things that you can make on your own using products from your home and enhancing them with essential oils. There's air fresheners. Air fresheners are really bad. That They have a lot of fragrance in them. Uh, body wash and body scrub. Owie spray for the kids. My grandkids love it. <laughs> Bubbles for the kids. Carpet stain remover, cleaning wipes, digestive aids, dish soap, dog shampoo, dryer balls and fabric softener. I talked about that earlier. Face wash or um, for a spray for a face mask. Uh, foot scrub, furnace filter freshener, 
Gooby gone, an inhaler. Do you remember these things? The Vicks inhalers? I don't know, some of you may be too young. I don't know, maybe they still make them, but I don't know if you remember them. Well, let me get in front of the camera here. I don't remember if you know these or not, but they're personal inhalers, so they're for your nostrils, but you can make your own inhalers too for congestion and opening up your respiratory system. I'd be curious at the end to see if anybody remembers those. <laughs> um, lice preventative, hair treatments, hand sanitizer, insect bug repellent, linen mattress spray, lotions. There's non-fragrant lotions that you can get that have absolutely no fragrance and they still can moisturize. But if you want, you can add essential oils if you want to get a fragrance in there or if you wanted added benefits from the essential oil, lavender and frankincense are really good ones for that. Uh, the magic sponge, uh, is that Mr. Clean? I think that does that. Uh, mask spray, mold, mildew remover, mouthwash, muscle discomfort ointment. We have a deep blue rub that is really good, but you can make your own too. Perfume, there's things for the kids, Play-Doh, slime, sidewalk, chalk, moon sand that you can make and then add the oils to them. Salve ointment for Christmas. We um, you could take a drop of essential oil and put it on Christmas cards or on the envelopes, like maybe the Siberian fur, and then people will have that when they open it up. They'll have that nice aroma. Or you could put it on pine cones and leave out a dish of pine cones. Seasonal threats shower blend, um, which is something you just drop in the shower. You can make a little. It's almost like a bath bomb, but it kind of goes in the shower. Or you can just drop some essential oils in there too. And it can really open up, especially if you're congested. Uh, sleepy time rub. I use this on my kids, grandkids' feet before bed, and they just love it. Uh, it helps them sleep, but it's kind of, you know, a tender bonding moment with them too. Soft scrub, sunscreen, sunburn spray, throat spray, toilet cleaner, window cleaner, wood polish, yoga mat spray. So there's a lot of different things and I'm not gonna talk to you about every single one, but there are just a couple I will talk about. So there's a basic household cleaner that you can just use water and just a little bit of liquid dish soap or Castile soap. I talked earlier about that and that'll give it just a little bit of foam. It won't really foam it, but um, but it will just a little bit. It almost makes everything mixed together better. And then you can drop some essential oils in there. Lab and, um, this says five, I, I would use more like 10, but it'll be your personal preference. Um, you can do lemon and lavender, lemon and white fur. Um, there's the, and you can add a little bit of vinegar if you want to it um, to give it even a little more bo bigger boost. The Siberian fir, if you want that pine smell instead of the lemon, you could use that. So this is going to be, um, make your cleaning um, more safe without the toxins. So it's even safe for your kids to help you. Um, so you can ditch the rubber gloves and mask and use some natural cleaners. Here's a couple more. Uh, deodorant, dishwasher soap, carpets, freshener and one for mopping. Um, I do wanna just take a second and talk about deodorant. Um, so there's antiperspirant and there's deodorant. So antiperspirant, um, so we need to let our body sweat and antiperspirant stops that. It's a natural pros process and it stops that and that's mainly the aluminum in there. So it's not so much stopping the sweating but it blocks the sweating so after long use, our body still tries to get rid of all that excess. So instead it deposits it in various, er various areas of the body, you know, like in the bone, the brain, liver, heart, spleen, muscle. So it's difficult to flush all that out after it's locked in place. It's gonna take a big de detox to do that. Uh, deodorant kills the bacteria. So you're still gonna sweat, um, but if you're going to do it, and you may as well use a natural one, something that's going to still give you a scent, but it won't be killing all that good bacteria. It'll still get rid of the bad bacteria and the smell, but you won't have it getting rid of all that good bacteria too. 
So use a natural deodorant or make your own. Here's a couple more recipes. I talked about our soft scrub recipe. Um, that's one that we use all the time. I have a few that are just constantly full in my cabinet. Some things I make as I use them, but there's some that I make and we just have and soft scrub would be one of them. There's a stovetop cleaner and a refrigerator and microwave cleaner on there too. And again, if you don't get this and want it later, just let me know, I can send it to you. So I want to talk just for a second about the quality of essential oils. So oils, essential oils aren't regulated. Um, so they may, you may be able to find cheap ones, but it's kind of like adding water to your products. So the quantities, um, so it may change the quantity, but not really the vital contents of it. So there's synthet synthetic and altered oils, which are created in a lab. They're the lowest grade oils. Then there's natural and pure oils, which again, oils aren't regulated, so they can use the words they'd like. They're overly processed, so they use, lose a lot of their healing compounds, and most commonly type sold, unfortunately, are these. And then there's wellness grade oils. So they're steam distilled, which is good. So they do have some healing compounds, but we don't know if they've been sprayed with insecticides or how they were grown or how exactly they were harvested, anything like that. Then you have the certified pure therapeutic grade oils, which are the highest grade, which you are guaranteed have the greatest healing properties and medicinal oils can be used as plant-based medicine. So one thing I want you to always look at is if you're buying an essential oil, look at one that you know could be taken internally like lemon, for example, lemon, peppermint, lavender, something like that. One that you know should be able to be taken internally. And if there's not supplement facts on that bottle, then you know it's not a quality oil. So that's one test that you can do um, to make sure it's a quality oil. So remember how fast chemicals enter your bloodstream? That's the same thing with oils too. So if you've got a bad oil, that's gonna enter your bloodstream too. You don't know how it was processed and what also is going into your body. Um, and just a note here, if you look, it says supplement facts, serving size, servings per container, about up 250. So there's at least 250. Some of them I think are even more than that. There's at least 250 drops in there. So say like on a bottle of, bottle of lemon, it costs like six cents a drop. And a lot of times you're just using a drop or two depending on your what you're doing. So it's very, very economical. And so we can be mindful of how we care for our skin um, for sun exposure to any product we put on our skin. Um, so these are the brands I use. There's an entire skin line. There's hair and body care products. They have really good ingredients and they work really well. Shampoo and conditioners usually have a lot of fragrances in them and a lot of preservatives. So that's one thing you have to be careful of again when buying those. So these here have natural fragrances. They're made from plant extracts, gentle cleaners and essential oils. And it cleanses and detoxifies the scalp while removing impurities and it doesn't dull the hair. So you can add some tea tree oil to it um, to ease skin irritation. You can add clove to repel lice. Um, and the conditioner also nourishes your hair like split ends and protects against damage, eliminates static and, and it still maintains the color. And there's, um, there's DIY ones you can do too. I just find this easier and it really isn't um, a lot more expensive. So this is, I just choose to use these products and not make my own, but there are ones out there that you can make on your own. And again, you can enhance them with the essential oil if you want, depending on the usage you want. For a uh, facial cleanser, if you just put a little bit of fractionated coconut oil in your hand and add a drop of oil and then apply it to your face, um, then you can, just wipe it with a warm washcloth. So you can add like lavender if you want it more moisturizing or tea tree if you're having breakouts. Um, if you have aging or redness or brown spots, you can use frankincense or lavender in a roller. There's a lot of different options out there. 
And I've talked a couple tight about the times tonight about the OnGuard products. So they're natural solutions to your cleaning and immune support needs. So these are the ones, this is the one I say that I take every day just to kind of keep the bugs away. Um, so they reduce viral replication by 90%. It's a propri proprietary blend that doTERRA makes, but you can do things like add baking soda to the laundry detergent to soften and brighten it or add purified, purified to freshen it or vinegar for softness. So laundry detergents, there's a lot of toxins in there. Um, so you have to be really careful about them. And again, clean doesn't need to be chemical. There's a lot, you know, our grandparents, our grandmas and great grandmas you know, didn't use all these products. It doesn't have to be chemical in order to be clean. Um, dryer sheets, I talked to you about that already. Um, use dryer balls. Um, oh, the other thing I was gonna mention about dryer sheets is that I might've mentioned it, but it's not only putting the toxins in the air and in our environment, but it's also putting it on our clothes. So we're sitting there walking around with these toxins on our clothes, true. So whenever you can try and line dry. We talked about antibacterial earlier. So there's OnGuard wipes. You can make your own wipes really easy with a half of a roll of paper towel. And you just gotta kind of find a big container, like, you know, an old big you know, peanut butter. Or I have coconut oil that I had a big container in. But you just take a half a uh, saw, so, cut a half a paper towel roll in half and you add your ingredients to that. I have a recipe for that too. So you can even make your own wipes. Um, and again, the antibacterial wipes out the bad, but with OnGuard, you can at least keep the good bacteria and it won't kill the good bacteria. And then there's a cleaner concentrate that is a really good disinfectant. So using essential oils keeps the planet and your pocketbook green. Instead of side effects, you get side benefits. It's easy to clean with them. They're safe and effective. Homemade cleaners are inexpensive and it makes your household smell great and you feel terrific, <clears throat> emotionally and physically. I can do an entire class just on that too. So I do have a free booklet to DIY cleaning. Joanna will send you that link either later tonight or tomorrow. Um, it's gonna have four chapters, why clean with essential oils, the science behind it, safe guidelines and tips, and then how to use them for cleaning. So if you're interested in that, that email will come. Oh, sorry, I was just slide behind that whole time. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, so there is what I was just talking about. There is the link if you want it on your own, but um, that DIY, it's, my website is wellnessadvocate.website. And then if you go to DIY and cleaning, it will be there. Let me get back here. All right, now we're on the same page again. <laughs> um, so we do have different ways of buying them. You can just be a retail customer. Um, for January only, I'm giving 20% off to any first time purchases. And then for wholesale customers, if you want, you can pay a $35 enrollment fee and you get 25% off everything for a year. And those, if you want an enrollment kit, there's a reduction in price on those, plus you don't have to pay that enrollment fee. And then you're also eligible for some rewards too. But if you want more information on any of that, there's my email, Joanna will be sending you that link also. And my Facebook page, I did quite a few posts today about cleaning on my Facebook page in preparation for tonight, that um, DIY cleaning link is also on there if you want that PDF file. So you can go on there. Um, so Joanna will make sure you get that. So once you green one aspect of your life, I can guarantee you'll want to continue. Going green is a constantly evolving process that all follows from that first tiny step. And this is really, if you haven't started, um, which I'm hoping some of you have, but you know, it's baby steps. You know, my first step was essential oils. Maybe yours will be too. Maybe it'll be changing just one cleaning or hygiene product. And maybe it'll be reducing some of the processed foods you eat. But 
Whichever way you choose, the next step is yours. And I'm going to end with a little smile here. I thought this was pretty funny. So I just had to throw that in at the end. <laughs> um, and yes, I do have a recipe for hand sanitizer. <laughs> so I will stop this. Okay, it worked. <laughs> oh, well, thank you so much, Eileen. That was so informative and good. I, good, uh, good. I hope so. Yeah, I smiled when you were talking about poison control because I swear to you all, I am a very good mother, but I caught <laughs> poison control six times with my four kids. And oh, twice, you're kidding. Twice for toothpaste. And the second time I knew what to do but I happened to be hosting a Girl Scout meeting at my house and I said, let's all learn how to call poison control together. <laughs> so, oh um, my gosh. Anyway, that was great. So we do have a couple of questions in the chat that I okay. um, will ask and feel free to continue typing questions in for Eileen. Um, so one question is, can you make your own sunscreen? You can. There is one ingredient. Um, I think it's citric acid. I have to, I haven't made it recently. Um, that isn't a commonly found product, but it's easily found on the internet. I got mine off Amazon. So there is one product in there. So if whoever that was, if they want to shoot me an email, if they can't find it, I will send them my recipe. Um, and I even, if they, I live in Wales. I'm very happy to meet people if they're close by or if they want to stop up. I have a lot of things like containers, you know, like this inhaler. You're not going to find this in the store, but I have a lot of DIY little spray bottles, big glass bottles. I have, this is my favorite bottle because it's a mister. It doesn't just spray like your normal spray bottles. It's a mister here. I don't want to get too close to my computer, but so I don't know if you could see that or not, but yes, we could. Um, that's one of my favorite ones. We use that for an air freshener. I hope I just didn't ruin my keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's, um, I don't have a lot of other ones handy here, but, um, but I have a lot of things here and, you know, it's, it, it does, it, these, these are so cheap and there's plastic bottles for lotions. If you want to make lotions, I have little jars. If you want to make like a moisturizer, if you want to make a lot of the home cleaning products, I save my old containers, um, depending on what they're made out of and what I'm going to use, like the soft scrub. I use that from an old container and I just keep refilling that. So there's a lot of different things you can use, but if you need containers, if you need more recipes, if you can't find a specific recipe, and getting back to the original question here, I got sidetracked, but I do have some of that. I think it's called citric acid. It's citric something that is in there. It's a safe product. I've checked with my naturalist and he's okay with it. And I do have some of that. So if you want to, you know, if it just takes a tablespoon, I'll just give you a tablespoon. And, and then if you like it, you can go get your own. Oh, that's great. And Jesse um, said that you can pick up citric acid at a beer brewing shop. And Sonia says, or at cheese making store. So both of those places. All right. Um, however, I don't necessarily go to beer brewing shops or cheese making stores, but now I kind of want to go find one. Yeah. <laughs> so. I wonder, I think, you know, like, um, like brew houses, I mean, places that oh, make sure. their own beer. I think, mm -hmm. I think that's what she's referring to. So there are yeah. those kind of all over the place. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And then um, another question, this one's from Sonia. So the um, slide you showed with the Dirty Dozen, are uh -huh. those very brand specific? They are. Okay. Yes, yes, definitely. Okay. Yep. Is, is that an image that you're gonna share with everyone or that you can share with everyone? I can. Um... How about if I send it to you when we're done and you can include it in the email you're sending out? Would that be the best way to do it? Or do you yeah. want people to contact me? No, I think that would be great. Okay. Like, I'll send it out to everyone um, because so that, that one... will be an attachment. Sure. So just so everyone knows it's going to be an attachment and it should be perfectly safe. Okay. Happen. That sounds great. 
Okay. Um, yeah, that sounds good. And then Jesse mentioned that um, she teaches aromatherapy um, oh, nice. inhaler classes, and they use those little Vic style inhalers. And my husband still buys them at the store. You can still buy them. Oh, you still can buy yes. them. Nice. Yes. Uh, is it still the Vicks inhalers? It is still Vicks inhalers. Wow. Yes. I have not seen one of those in ages, but I just love these because all you do is just put, you know, I don't know what's in a Vicks inhaler. I'm, I'm going to ask you guys, go look at the label and let me know what's in there. But um, all you do, there's like a little sponge inside here and you just drop the oils on the sponge. So like a breathe oil or a peppermint. And then it just, and you can keep redoing it. You can mm -hmm. keep adding more to it because the top unscrews. So you can just keep adding more to it too. But, oh, I'm going to have to start looking for those. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then a question from me, actually. Are there essential oils that work well on like calcium buildup or rust buildup, you know, where we live in our area? I'm in McGuanico, so I'm close to you. Like our water is so calcified and our well water yeah are there any that on, work well on that on what surfaces like on a tub yes yes so um there are some cleansers um i actually would have to look and see which one is the best is it calcium or is it iron well i have issues with both so. with both okay all right i would have to do a little research on exactly which oil to do but i do have a recipe for that but um, I would just want to double check on the best oil to go along with that. Okay. Do you have a recipe for dog shampoo? I do. And actually there is a dry shampoo also. So it depends on kind of what you're looking for. So um, I can share the dog shampoo recipe. Um, do you want to email me or should I include that in the link also? Or you know what? I could... Um, posted on Facebook. I could, you know what? I have it posted on my website. I'll find the link and I'll just email you the link and that can oh. go out in tomorrow's email too. Okay. So I don't want to do another attachment. So I'll put that as a link. So I'll sure. have the attachment and then the link to the dog shampoo. Okay. That sounds great. And so I heard you mention that clothes the clove oil was good as a lice deterrent. Is that correct? Correct. And also tea tree. Okay. That's what I was going to ask because I had yep. heard that before. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I actually, if it were me and I was doing it for my kids, which I mean, that's usually where you have to deal with it. And so it's usually on your kids that you're doing it. I would do both clove and tea tree. Okay. And if you just put that in their regular shampoo, um, I think it's really going to be beneficial. So you can just put drops of oil in regular shampoo. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I suggest a natural shampoo. Yes. But yes. Yes. Yep. Okay. <laughs> All right. Are there any surfaces that you should not use like a lemon essential oil on? Um, yeah, if it's a plastic surface, oh, that's right. Of, you know, wood's okay. There's a great wood polish. It just loves wood. It loves leather, metal, glass. It's fine with all that. So I would just be careful of anything that is plastic. Do a test area on it. So I am so glad you said that because I forgot to show you our styrofoam. Yeah, form. let's see. So, okay, let me get it up here. Oh. So look at what it did to that styrofoam. Yeah. I'm trying to get it so... You can see that there's like a little divot in it. You know, there's a, a hole yeah. in there, it actually. Yeah, so it, uh, yeah, it is not meant for plastic. So again, I could put that on glass, on my skin, on wood, anything. It's just don't use it on plastic, but that's what makes it a good detoxifier because that's a petrochemical and that's what we build up in our body and our cells and that lemon oil is what's going to detox that out of us. Okay. Um, yeah, that's amazing what that looks like. Yeah. Um, Janet is asking, is there anything usable on glass? Is there anything what on glass? Usable on glass. So uh, to what, clean? Yes. 
What's yes. a good glass oh, recipe? Definitely. And I think lemon's a really good one for that. But again, there's quite a few options you can use. Um, but I, there, I was going to say, I have so many recipes. I think maybe the best is if you're really looking for a specific recipe, you can look on my website. If you can't find it, email me. But there's a lot on the internet, too. But it's mainly just a little bit of um, oil. And you can put, like, does everyone know what fractionated coconut oil is? So we have our coconut oil which is hard, you know, it's like butter or whatever, but fractionated coconut oil takes the fat out of the oil. So it's a liquid. So even pick and save has some, doTERRA has some that they sell, but even pick and save has it in the oil section up with the Crisco and all that stuff. It's up on the top shelf, but it's um, fractionated coconut oil. So it's a liquid form. So you can use all that to mix in with your cleaners and stuff. So you can add a little bit of that. You can add some vinegar. We actually just use vinegar and water with essential oil. And I know that sounds kind of weird putting water on your, you know, as a wood polish, um, but it works really well on glass cleaner, as a glass cleaner. Um, just that essential oil in there. I talked before about the lemon and the wild orange breaking down that gumminess. So it really does, you know, those smears, everything on there is going to get it right off. So um, glass cleaner is really easy to make. Again, glass spray bottle. Don't use yeah. a plastic one. Excellent. And then can you, um, what was your, I'm going to put this in the chat. What was your um, website address again? It's wellnessadvocate.website. Okay, Wellnessadvocate.website. Yep. Just that? Yep. And then there's a lot in the blog, but I have a special section just for DIY that you can just start scrolling through there and find a bunch of recipes. But again, if you're looking for something specific and can't find it, you can contact me through the website. You can email me, um, what, however you want to get in touch with me, and I'll make sure you get it. I'm usually pretty quick. I'm on my computer quite a bit. Okay. And then I have one final question because I know we're already over time and I appreciate everybody hanging out. Um, is So I feel like we as a society, right, as soon as COVID hit, like we went to the harshest, most strict chemicals and the hand sanitizers. And mm -hmm. I even in my office here, I looking, I have seven big containers of Lysol wipes. And so it's, is your feeling as you're cleaning naturally that things are really as disinfected as when we're using these really harsh chemicals? I do. And I think it's even better because we're supposedly using those products to be cleaner, to be healthier, and we're not. Maybe, maybe it's clean, but it's not healthy. It's hurting us. And these products, especially those on guard products, there's so many things. We said our grandparents never used all these harsh okay. chemicals. You know, it's, there's just so many, you have to really believe that essential oils can work just as well. I do. And I think if you haven't experienced them, that if you do, that you're going to start believing it too, because it does, it kills germs. It's proven. I have a slide I, I actually cut my presentation back tonight because I know I didn't want it to get too long. I, I do a whole hour just on this typically, just with the presentation. But I have this one slide that shows a Petri dish with Lysol and a Petri dish with On Guard. And the On Guard works better. Um, Pine Sol was the other Petri dish, you know. So again, you want that slide, email me. I'll send you the slide. But I think you might be able to find it online too. Okay. Um, but there's, there's so much science. If you're into science, there's a whole website that's doTERRA's science blog that is all about the science behind essential oils. It's just that, like I said, they're the life but of blood of plants. They protect the plants from bacteria, the viruses, all that. And they protect us from that too. You know, we're all living things. Yeah. Did that answer it enough? 
Oh, it answered it great. And, okay. Okay. and I have used essential oils for a very long time. And, and my feeling is, is not only are you cleaning it, but you're also, you get all those health benefits while you're cleaning. Right. So, so that's it. And I am in a commercial building with, you know, like cleaning. I know I, my office I is too. I hate to it. Not have six <laughs> containers of Lysol wipes and that's where we are right now. So, yeah. Yeah. um, and Jesse also just mentioned in the chat that um, if we were to check most of these wipes, they would say that you can't even use the surface until wipe done and you have to wait like 10 minutes for it to kill things. So it's yeah. not even like an instant yeah. thing. So. Yeah. And I always, especially said before, but I always have a diffuser going too because that just keeps the air clean. I've been using OnGuard in there for Oh gosh, I guess we're already looking at almost a year. I mean, I did before, but I do it quite a bit now. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's a way just to keep the air clean. And again, like I talked before about when you use a um, cleaner, it actually can land like on the dust and stay in your house on your surfaces and stuff. So this will help clean that air, but it'll also deposit on your surfaces too. So kind of double cleaning action there. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Eileen. This has been really fantastic. Yeah, so, all right. Well, thank you, everyone. If you have questions, feel free to reach out to Eileen and her email and contact information will also be in the email for me, so. Thanks, Joanna. All right, thank you, everybody. Have a good night. Bye. Bye.